Shalom Israel. I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rakakwadash, the Bawanas of the Apostles, and the Elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to Lek out there, doing the rig of faith and labor of love and true sincerity. All right, I want to get into a brief topic um, based upon the covenants. Um, you know, just pertaining to all the uh, the folly, the madness that's been going on, you know, with um, voc vocab, no class Malone, um, you know, and different stuff like that. And, you know, it's always a thing to where you're always going to have people trying to uh, marry all the other nations uh, with these scriptures, marry other nations uh, into our salvation, which only pertains to the Israelites, according to scripture. You know, you're always going to have this. And that's why, you know, every time. You know, the apostles, the elders, and other brothers, and you know what I'm saying we all, you know, uh, you know, do our best to display unto the people like you don't know what the hell you're talking about, and clearly showing people through the scriptures, you know, that the Lord is the God of Israel, the power of Israel, and only for Israel, man. And these these scriptures only pertain unto the Israelites, but yet they give you the future judgment of all the other nations, you know, and uh you know one key thing is through the covenants because it's it's so so basic it's so so basic man you know so i'm gonna start off with uh the book of uh genesis uh 17 and um and i'm gonna start with uh and it's like i might as well start from yeah i'm gonna start from the top and i'm gonna just uh, jump through all right it's um genesis 17 the one that says and when abram abram was 90 years old and in nine the lord appeared to abram and said unto him i am the almighty power walk before me and be thou perfect and i will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thy thee exceedingly and abram fell on his face and uh yahweh talked with him saying as for me behold my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations neither shall thy name any more be called abram but Thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make a, make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. All right? And this is one of the main points here, that kings shall come out of thee. All right? This is one of the main points here, so keep that in mind, that kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a power unto thee and thy seed after thee okay so we all know that dealing with this first covenant and it's self-explanatory it deals with who the israelites all right it deals with the israelites and when when you go down to uh yeah i'm gonna go to verse uh, yeah, go to verse 15, okay, and it says, And Yahweh said unto Abraham, As for Sarah thy wife, uh, Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her, sh shall her name be, and I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, she shall be a mother of nations, kings of people shall be of her. All right? Now, uh, do, 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 do. yeah, what's the other point? But yeah, I'm just continuing to uh, verse 18. It says, And Abram said unto Yahweh, O, oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And Yahweh said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him and, and as for ishmael i have heard thee behold i have blessed him and i will make him fruitful and multiply him exceedingly 12 princes shall he beget and i will make him a great nation so we now we get into the thorough establishment of the son that sarah is going to have that's the one that kings are going to come from her through abraham man i mean from abraham through her uh but what it said, but what as for Ishmael, what princess shall he beget? So that doesn't deal with, uh, and we know that the the uh, the Arabs, you know, the so-called Arabs, the Ishmaelites, they know who their forefather is, man. They know 
that their forefather goes back to, to Ishmael and Abraham. But they're not the chosen. So how could they possibly be a part of those um, those covenants? All right. So how could they possibly be a part of those covenants? When the Lord is clearly making that distinction, right? Verse 21, it says, but my covenant will uh, establish with Isaac. So the, the covenant didn't go unto Ishmael. The covenant went unto Isaac. All right. But which Sarah shall bid unto thee at this set time in the next year so the lord is making that clear cut distinction of who the covenant shall be with now in the old testament what other scripture is there that pertains unto uh that that can possibly pertain unto any other nation there is none there is none period and the lord making these uh, uh covenants because this was just the first one, but the Lord also uh, making the second covenant that also only pertains to who? The Israelites, right? And um, I want to go to uh, the book of uh, Galatians uh, yeah, 3 and um, 15. And it says, <clears throat> uh, uh, I'm starting at verse 14. It says uh, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Through Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Now, so many people, of course, we know, uh, you know, get this mixed up, and that's why, you know, uh, as I'm establishing this lesson, you know, about the covenants, you know, you have the nooks and crannies in there, which is about the Gentiles, the, the mysteries and different things like that. But once you get to understand the gist of who the Lord truly died for, who the Lord came for, who the Lord is only giving salvation to. Then you can get into the uh, the middle and you can find figure out all of the nooks and crannies, man. You know, how else will we have known who we were today? The Lord had to reveal that unto us and, and all of the, the, the secrets, the mysteries, the prophecies and different things. They all relate to us as the Israelites. And through that, we see who the Lord is only dealing with. And then we figure out, OK, well. These other nations, they, these other people, they saying that the Gentiles are these people. But when we get into the nooks and the crannies, as far as dealing with the Greek and the Hebrew, then we come to the, the thorough understanding that, you know, you had different types of Gentiles. You had the Gentiles as far as the other nations and you had a, a Gentiles uh, or Israelites that were considered Gentiles because of the mind frame in which they were in. And the customs and things that they practiced were of the other nations. So therefore, they were called gentiles just how you have our people today and before we came into this truth well we could have been we were considered a uh, uh, gentiles because of the mind frame which we're in we're americanized and that's the way that uh, the average person the average israelite um a man and woman and child is in that mind frame today okay um <clears throat> well uh, verse four it says um that the blessing of abraham might come on the Gentiles through Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now, it said, no man uh, disannulleth or addeth thereto, right? So, okay, uh, this no. if I'm spelling it the right way this uh, okay. I'll it. this uh I spell it. Slock it. yeah I'm, I'm spelling it the right way well it's not popping up Oh, because I'm on, damn. Damn, airplane mode. Slocky. I forgot about that. Uh, let's get the definition. Slocky. <clears throat> Okay, so to disannul means 
to annul, utterly make void. So no uh, man, no other person can make void this contract. Because, hey, and they said what? To disannul a contract. Because that's what the covenant pretty much is. It's like a contract. You know? It's like it's exactly like a contract. So read this again. It says, Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannul or no man can make it void or add it thereto. Clear cut. No man can make this contract uh, uh, null and void, and no other man can add anything else unto this contract, unto this covenant that was given unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, and through uh, the seed, the 12 tribes of Israel. No other nation's period can be added unto that, man. And, and like I said, when you get into the nooks and the crannies of the scriptures, you thoroughly find that out. And when you look up the word itself, covenant, I wish I had my, uh, I don't have my Bible dictionary with me, but when you look up that word covenant, right, it, it, it's uh, the word in the Hebrew is barayath, you know, in the, in the Yiddish, you know, they would say uh, barith or something like that, but it's barayath, you know what I'm saying, which uh, pretty much means what, a, a, a promise, man, you know, it's a will. It's a testament. That's why you have what? The Old and the New Testaments. When you get into that, the Old and the New Testaments, because in the Hebrew, there's no word for the actual word testament. So they had to do the best that they could in translation and uh, by using the word testament. But it's really supposed to be covenant. So when you look at the Old and the New Testament, it's really supposed to be the Old and the New Covenant. Okay? That was the best translation that they could find for the word covenant was the word testament all right so uh you know a covenant you know is pretty much what a will or a contract or a promise you know so with this promise you know being given to uh abraham through yahweh himself and it flowing through the seeds no man can make that void or add if any other nation there too because he said what king shall come out of thee and what he wasn't dealing with uh, Ishmael, he's only with dealing with Isaac and through that line, man. The Lord always has a chosen line, okay? So verse 16, it says, Now to Abraham and his seed, his seed, okay, where the promise is made, he saith not, and to seeds as of many, because what? Abraham altogether, he had six sons. You know, he had the son by uh, Sarah, you know, the son by uh, Hagar, then he had four uh, by his second wife Keturah, all right, and to seeds as of many, but not. Oh, uh, Slack, let me bring that back now to Abraham and his seed where the promise is made. He saith, not he saith, not and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Yahweh Shah. So, I want to read verse 17 too. But what when you go through the lineage of Yahweh Shah, how does that all go through? <laughs> so this 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 is clear cut, man. This is clear cut. Once again, let me go back to it because it said what? Uh, uh, but as of one and to thy seed, which is Yahweh Shah. So to Abraham and his seed where the promise is made, and it went down to Yahweh Shah, who the world enemy calls um, you know, Jesus Christ. So what do we have here in, in Matthews 1? The book of the generation of Yahweh Shah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. All right. And Abraham begat Isaac. Isaac begat Jacob. Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. So on and so forth. And when you go all throughout the lineage, who is that? That's nothing but Israelites, man. It's nothing but Israelites going down throughout the generation. So when you read verse 17, it says, let's start at verse 16. It says, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of whom was born Yahweh Shah, who is called Hamashiach. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon until Yahweh Shah are 14 generations. So this is all dealing and only pertaining to Israelites, man. Only pertaining to Israelites. When you're dealing with Yahweh Shah, what that is the beginning and, and him shedding his blood for the nation of Israel. That's the beginning of the entering into that second covenant, man. You know, 
and I w watched uh, some of Apostle Aram Lab's uh, live stream earlier this uh, this morning, you know, and he was getting into some of that, man. You know, the end of the world started to begin, uh, you know, uh, around those times, 2000 years ago. And the beginning of the second covenant began with Yahweh shot shedding his blood for the nation of Israel. You know, because as he read uh, in the book of uh, Hebrews, uh, the ninth chapter, I believe the 22 verse, uh, there is no remission of sins without uh, uh, the, the shedding of the blood in which Yahweh Shah did. Man. You know what? For the nation of Israel, according to uh, Acts <clears throat> 5 and um, 30, and it says, uh, the power of our fathers uh, raised up Yahweh Shah. Who ye slew and hanged on a tree, him have Yahweh exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to for, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins, man, to Israel, not any other nation that's out there, man. So I want to go back to uh, the book of uh, Galatians, All right? Uh, yeah, Galatians. Uh, Three and I read verse sixteen over again. It says now to Abraham and his seed where the promise is made. He saith not and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Yahweh shot. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of Yahweh and Yahweh shot, the law which was four hundred and thirty years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. Let me read that one more time. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of Yahweh in Yahweh Shah, the law, so he's talking about what? The, the original covenant, the first covenant, okay, which was uh, signified, you know, uh, through the law, which was uh, justified by the law, uh, uh, made I say if I'm saying that in the correct manner, okay, because what? We was given the, the promises of the Mosa, but what we we had a set of instructions to to follow through with if we were to inherit the uh the promises, okay? To act to inherit the will, to inherit uh, uh the promises, all right? So it says, which was four hundred and thirty years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. So even though Israel didn't keep up, you know, with those uh laws you know everything that was done through the law cannot disannul or cannot make void the promise which the lord gave unto abraham man because that promise was solidified man how would that look if the most high made a promise and then went back on his word the, the most high is not a man that he should go back on his word man the lord said what he said to abraham and he meant it and he following through with it so even though Israel, so this was all set up from the beginning. That's why these, it's called the scriptures because it's a script. It's the Most High's movie. So with the Most High set up, he knew that Israel would go off, even though he gave, uh, told Abraham like, boom, you know what I'm saying? Your generation is going to inherit this, so on and so forth. He's still knowing that we were going to go off. He made sure within his contract or within his will that he set forth to Abraham and to the generation thereafter that regardless, nothing can be made void with this. Um, uh, uh, with the promise that I gave to you and, and your uh, generations, because I'm going to make sure that I'm going to put a uh, a contingency plan in place so that uh, your your seed does follow through and can make it and can survive to give to get the promises and everything that I uh, said that I will give you, man. And that contingency plan or that second plan after the law, because what we can be made, made perfect by the law, that contingency plan was. The Most High sending his own son down, Yahweh shot, to die for the nation of Israel, man. So the Most High had a backup plan, man. So that everything would go according to his plan, his word, his script, all right? So uh, verse 18, it says, for if the inheritance be of the law, right? Because what? The inheritance, and that's what that 17 verse is getting into as well, that the inheritance is not of the law, okay? That the inheritance is not of the law, is of... Uh, the, the promise it is no more of promise but Yahweh gave it to Abraham by promise so as I was just saying the most I put in that contingency plan so that regardless of what like he made a promise to him he made a contract to him you know what I'm saying that yo you and your seed is going to be straight 
So the Most High wasn't going to go back on that, man. So it's verse 19, it says, Where, Wherefore then serveth the law. It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but Yahweh is of one. Okay? So, as I said, like that, that pretty much hits the whole point home, man. That hits the whole point home. And, and uh, a couple more scriptures real quick. Right? Because going to what? The book of Romans. Uh, no apostles of heart just went into this. But I'm going to just read through the verse 4. Uh... Of Romans 9 and 1. I say the truth in Yahweh Shah, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Yahweh Shah for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants. In the giving of the law and the services of God and the promises or the covenants or the will, okay, or or the testaments, as it says, what the old and new testament, which is just uh short for what the, the old and the new covenants, man, according to the Hebrew, the word barayaf. All right, verse five, whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Yahweh Shai came, who is over all. Yahweh be blessed forever and ever. Uh, uh, to what? Okay, so that's how that's how it goes, man. Straight to the point. All right. In the book of uh, Hebrews, uh, Slaki. What am I doing? <clears throat> the book of Hebrews, the eighth chapter. Uh, Hebrews eight and eight it says. <clears throat> Yo, I'll start at uh, verse. I start at verse seven. Matter of fact, I start at verse six. It says, "But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant with Yahweh Shah, which was established upon better promises." Okay, for if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. What that contingency plan, man? You know what I'm saying? Yahweh Shah, and, and making that second covenant, right? For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. Okay? So after what those days... And we're approaching the end of this first contract and then the transition of the, the second contract, the second covenant, okay? Uh, Say of the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a power and they shall be to me a people. What? So the Lord is going to literally write them in our minds, uh, uh, put them in our minds so that what? We don't go off and that we actually live according to his will. And that we don't slip up with the laws, man. Okay? Verse 11, it says, And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest, man. So this is what the Mosiah is going to do with the whole nation of Israel, man. Okay? Because this, this uh, covenant was given to us, man. No other nations. Going back into the point of uh, me bringing out uh, Galatians, uh, the third chapter, where it said, No man disannulleth, no man can make void or.